Hey, what's up, I hate music fans? I too hate music. In fact, I hate it so much that I do a little podcast called The Sonic Cloth. The concept is pretty simple. It's just myself and sometimes a musical guest spending each episode taking the listener down a different rabbit hole of deep music. My goal with the podcast is basically to be as musically wide-ranging as possible. So I've got episodes on U.S. black metal, ecstatic music, 90s electronica, and explorations into record labels that I love like The Flenser, The Numera Group, and I Void Hanger. So if you're into deep listening and don't mind a bit of a longer format, subscribe to the Sonic Cloth podcast and thrust yourself down the rabbit hole. want to talk about your shirt for a second though you're wearing this like amazing i mean you just told me it's a worship him era which makes sense it's got the like the bleeding wrists into the chalice thing um yeah. yeah it's is there anything on the back uh no actually that's one of the things i like about it i'm not yeah. a huge fan of back prints i am sometimes but they kind of have to be right i think yeah. the funniest thing about uh back prints is like so many metalheads have long ass hair that covers it anyway <laughs> yeah you know <laughs> Not not much of a, a problem for our age and, and up anymore. <laughs> yeah, and especially not for you and I. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man, a few a few months ago, I was like, fuck it, man. I'm so sick of shaving my head. So I just didn't for like a month, and it was just awful. No, it was like a month and a half. And at first, I was like, oh, man, like this is pretty cool. I like this. I could actually feel like my hair blowing in the breeze. Yeah. But then after month and a half or so, my friends were like, what does Aaron think of this? I'm like, Oh, I don't think Aaron cares. And they're like, Oh yeah, she definitely cares. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> actually I do look really gross. I'm going to shave my head again. I don't think I've ever been that brave to just, uh, let it, let it go. Um, not recommended, not recommended. Yeah. Well, and you're a very handsome man with, with, uh, the shaved head too. So you're just saying that cause we kind of look alike. I think we, we kind of do a little bit. I look like yeah. an, older more bearded version of you <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm jason twink exactly i mean that's yeah. i'm glad you said it <laughs> yeah i'm smooth I, I always shave yeah yeah i you know i can't really shave anymore my face anyway it's uh it just it makes me look like too much of a baby uh just oh i'm glad it's not irritation at least no Which, no uh, no brings, brings us to our sponsor yeah. For the show. Um, it's not- what is the, <laughs> what alleviates irritation? <laughs> I have actually no idea. Dragon um, force. Yeah. Dragon force. Um, well, let's talk about, I see mm-hmm. that there is a, an amazing harp right next to you too. Oh, that's, that's actually a hammer uh, dulcimer. That's what I meant. Sorry. I'm yeah. a little tired. Yes. Oh, hammer yeah. dulcimer. I, I, I know the difference between a harp and a, and a hammer dulcimer. <laughs> hey, I hope. you're ahead of a lot of people, I think. Yeah, you know? that's, that's I true. I have a couple other hammer dulcimers, but they're on loan because <laughs> during the pandemic, uh, actually, Carl from Inexorum wanted mm-hmm. to learn to play and I loaned him one. And Oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah. I, I always love, I don't know, they, they look really hard to play. They look I think really they can be play. intimidating just because yeah. of the way they look, but there's they're really easy. <laughs> I right. feel like, um, yeah, it's an e- it's an easy instrument to learn and pick up, especially if you have a an okay ear. Mm-hmm. I never would have anticipated it being easy. Actually, it seems really really difficult. Do you do it with like the two hammers in one hand? Do you play it like that, or do you have um, like one in each? No, just just one in each. Okay. Um, yeah, I play like um, I wouldn't. I don't know. I don't want to say normal. I mean, like because there's, you know, like the Santor is like the um, Iranian or I guess Persian version of it. You know, and mm-hmm. like one guy actually used to take harp lessons with Chad McAnally. Um, he played. He he learned hammered dulcimer uh, because he learned Santor first. So his oh. way he held the mallets was super weird, but okay. they're much longer. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's, it's a fascinating instrument. I've never really attempted to do anything with it. Um, but you've incorporated it in your work for a long time. I, I don't, you know, I, I don't think I have though. I don't think I recorded oh, anything. I guess you're right. I'm thinking again about a harp. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, it's weird. I, I actually, I love all kinds of old instruments. I just think mm-hmm. they're really fun and I love the process of learning and stuff. But usually when it comes down to like recording, like even with obsequia and stuff, like Vicente is just an expert, you know, like he knows yeah. everything about harps and especially medieval harps, you know, like, yeah. um, uh, there are like medieval harps, um, that to achieve like an interval that you wouldn't have in a diatonic scale, you actually like more or less fret it. So you push the string of the harp against the top, you know, the bridge. Oh, interesting. Okay. Those. Yeah. So, I mean, <clears throat> there's all kinds of, I don't know, things that I, I don't know if it necessarily sounds better, but like it's authentic. you know, like right. I, really, yeah. I love that. I love kind of like not delegating, but just having people who are far more capable mm-hmm. than me. <laughs> Yeah. So. Yeah. No, for sure. Yeah. Like, I mean, his playing is amazing too. Yeah. He's, he's really one of a kind. How did you find him? Um, I think I, I'm trying to remember specifically, but it might've been in the early kind of days of YouTube and he had the song. Um, it was actually, um, La Mort en Suis Esprit, which is, one of the harp songs on Aria and he had performed it on a medieval double harp at the time. Okay. And I think it was in Japan. Like it was this just a uh, horribly captured video. But when mm-hmm. I heard it, I was like, this is incredible. Like no one else has posted medieval harp videos, you know? Right. Yeah. And I don't remember how I actually got his information because I don't think it was on YouTube, but I, had, I somehow looked him up and was like, Hey, you know, like, um, I love this. Where did you get the sheet music for Le Morne on Sweetest Free? And he's like, oh, Osni, this woman in New Zealand. Um, and so I I ended up ordering it from her, and I received this, you know, um, booklet with the notation three different ways. One with, like, traditional notation, one with nooms, which is, like, the medieval notation. Yeah. And I noticed, like, none of them had time signatures. And I, I wrote to Vicente, I was like, how did you spin this song into like four minutes? The notation is like, it's like four measures of right. music. <laughs> yeah. You know? Okay. And that's uh, before like, or never mind getting into that, but like, that's sort of where my journey began with that. Like we're really exploring like, oh my gosh, there's a lot to know. So I yeah. do take it a little bit rough when people are like, oh, like the, the songs and the albums are just cover songs of old, you know, medieval. Works oh, or yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Fuck you. You know, like you, right. you try, you try interpreting this. Interpreting like it's, it's tough. Yeah. Yeah. So I took a, I took a lot of lessons where a lot of times I didn't even bring instruments. I just looked at manuscripts with instructors. Wow. And, you know, that's so, so crazy. I think that a lot a lot of people wouldn't realize that or understand that. Yeah. Um, and Vicente is super cool. Like I, um, I've, I've gone to him a bunch for advice, um, and counsel, you know, with music and stuff. Mm-hmm. So it was really cool to have him be a part of this. And it felt really natural as opposed to like, Hey, here's this harp player I found. <laughs> and right. You yeah. know, let's insert him in like, session or something yeah yeah exactly um so let's talk about um sequia a little bit sure the last record was what two years ago yeah it was on november uh 2019 november 2019 okay yeah yeah it's 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 been a bit um do you have like a I mean, I don't want to like turn this into an interview, but I, I, I do find it interesting because I like, do you have like an overarching like uh, theme or anything like that with as far, as far as like album to album or yeah, album to album, or even just like an overarching thing, um, you know, or like common themes that you deal with. 
uh, I mean, it, it seems like from the outside, especially like with the album covers and stuff, like you can see that there's like definitely like a feel that you have. Um, but I'm wondering, like, is, it, is there like a, a a concept or a theme that you have on like on a certain record or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, um, I guess there's kind of a common thread in all of them that's more like sort of just a personal appreciation, you know, but like, yeah, as far as, um, like a theme between them, I, I'm still figuring it out. I, I think, um, I think I take just like any, any band that I listen to, I take different things at different times, you know? Sure. Yeah. And, um, when I started, I started the band, I had really clear goals for myself to mm-hmm. try and explore you know, commonalities between medieval music and heavy metal, which is really hard to do because like modal music, especially like Dorian, um, the mode uh, of Dorian. Yeah. Um, there are four medieval modes, but that's like the one that's so iconic, I guess. Okay. Uh, it doesn't allow for a lot of like modulation to be brutal. Right. You know, like if you think about like, when yeah. you had get like a guitar world magazine, I don't know if that's even a thing anymore. But I like, think it is. Yeah. Well, if you have like these, these tabs where it's like zero one, you know, like, uh-huh. right. You know, those kinds of like just riffs we all play when we learn you know, SOD song or something. Yeah, you know? exactly. Like you can't, you can't like flatten that second or else you have a totally different song on your hands you know, right. in that mode. Yeah. And so I kind of, for a while, like, especially with palms, I realized I was giving myself a lot of extra credit for suffering (laughs) because (laughs) I was sort of adhering to these sort of rules that like no one's going to fucking know, you know? So I think in the future, I, I do want to deviate a little bit more, um, out of, out of like really strict medieval modes and kind of just write more adventurous Mm -hmm. music, but definitely still within that theme. But like, you know, I don't mean to be cheesy or something, <laughs> but with the of Sequoia, I just really want to have, um, I, I want people to kind of like connect to like a deeper part of themselves. And for me, I am always able to do that when I have something to escape in, you know? Um, I mean, I, I don't know, even when you think of like meditating or something, usually it right. starts on at focusing on one thing. It doesn't even have to be relaxing necessarily, mm-hmm. but yeah, I don't have like some grand idea about medieval Europe. Like I don't, I don't give a shit at all. You know, right. I'm just interested in the music and stuff like, yeah. Um, so yeah, I just, I always say it's like the deep wells, you know? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I mean, knowing you personally, and also I can hear it in the music. I, there's, you've definitely got some like uh Swedish and Greek metal in there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm hearing, you know, I think, uh, I vibrate and resonate a lot with bands like rotting Christ and Verathron. And I feel like I can hear like a lot of that in your work, which makes me very happy. Um, thanks. I mean, I think that obviously Swedish metal is widely celebrated, but I think that the the Greeks kind of get the short end of the stick a lot of times. Yeah, they have like, or uh, they like historically have, but I feel like in the past ten years it's been much more celebrated. You know, just like yeah. old school death metal and stuff. All the stuff's kind of coming back. You know, yeah. we were talking about like however many years ago we were like you know, would talk to anyone that would listen about like the first atrocity album and right, you know, and dungeon synth. And now it's everywhere. And it's like, Mm. I have shit to do. This is inconvenient. All my, all my dreams. (laughs) (laughs) Well, yeah. Dungeon synth is huge. Like Bandcamp even did like a dungeon synth month or something. Yeah. It's great. Uh, And they have all those sieges too. uh, the Northeast dungeon siege. Um, Uh I did a lot of uh, uh, streaming of that you know, just during the pandemic. Yeah. I I mean, it's, it's funny because I think for me, dungeon synth was like such a flash in the pan. I was like, Oh, this is cool. And then it was done. And then I got into like more like cold meat type stuff. Yeah. But, like most people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But then, but I also found like in the last like two years or so, I'm like, Oh shit, man. I like, I really love those, those early mortis records. And, oh yeah. Um, not so much smell of rain era, but you know, the earlier stuff and yeah, man, it's untouchable. Much... And I feel yeah, like, it's... sorry, oh, but I, just, sorry I feel no. like there's, 
<laughs> I, I, I just feel like there's yeah. like all these newer Dungeon Synth projects that are actually really damn good too. Yeah, I mean it's so hard to tell, right? Because like it's so oversaturated, but right. like there there clearly are really good good Dungeon Synth artists, and of course, like people are learning more about synthesis in the process. Yes. You know, they uh-huh. don't just have like the um, I forget what what Martise used something th- JV thirty. I'm um, not sure. He, yeah, I'm po- I'm almost positive he didn't even master his albums either. But like, you no, know, people, no, like a lot of these did. people learn about synthesis are going to get more into like, you know, they're going to hear coil or something and yeah. like mm-hmm. walk around. And then all of a sudden they're going to be like, Oh no, I still have to tag myself dungeon synth to get <laughs> some views or something, you know? Yeah. Well, but dungeon synth is kind of a perfect genre for not only the times as far as like technology goes, but like during a pandemic, like it's mostly one person in their mom's basement, you know, they're like yeah. unemployed and they have like, a couple synths and some kind of DAW and they can make awesome dungeon synth. Yeah. Yeah. And as much as I feel like it's, it's so easy to like shit on stuff, you know, and I feel like we all do it with our friends <laughs> like you and mm-hmm. I have certainly, but like I would never discourage even a, like a saturated genre like that. Like if that's what someone's trying to explore, then like, hell yeah, good for you. I, I want to help somehow. <laughs> yeah. Know? Yeah. No, I, I agree. I mean, I think there is a glut of it right now, but um, yeah, I mean, I definitely want people to explore and make themselves happy and, and create. Yeah. Creating yeah. is a very important thing. And there's uh, so many, like, don't you, don't you feel like a lot of like the best, <laughs> I don't know. I, I feel like some of the best musical minds I've come across are people that don't even like play instruments. <laughs> yeah. You know? like, yeah. I, I agree. I mean, we were talking about that last week. I mean, that's, yeah, yeah that's something that was kind of a, a revelation of mine um, or a, a revelation to me in the last few years. Um, I've always been kind of uncomfortable with the label of musician, um, at least for myself. Yeah. And uh, cause I'm, I mean, like I can, I can work my way around an instrument, but I'm not like classically trained. I'm not, you know, I'm not fucking Steve DiGiorgio or Trevor Dunn or anybody like that. And I can work my way around like a bunch of gear and make some awful noise, you know? Um, but, uh, yeah, it's just always been comfortable with that, with that label. And so I'm trying to just open my mind, like beyond that label, like beyond the label of musician or just beyond the label of bass player. And especially with Agaloc, I was, I was the bassist. I was the bass player. Now, Agaloc's not a thing. Like, what else can I do? How else can I expand my horizons and challenge myself? So I've been focusing yeah. on that a lot. And I think that you do that in a very similar way, too. Like, it feels like you're always trying to, like, broaden your horizons, expand your yeah. palette. I really don't feel like um, a, a musician in the sense that I, I feel like you can relate to i know that like but to, to a lot of my friends of course i am you know and i would consider right. like i would consider you a musician but i i understand what you're saying too because yeah. like f- for example like especially sort of at the end of the 90s and i was like starting to kind of like record myself like i was not as capable uh of a guitar player um i, st- I still don't feel that way as a lot of people that i was around And I feel like technology kind of saved me, like, because I wasn't trying to like play a a monstrosity riff or something, you know, uh, (laughs) I, I could like hold out melodies and write harmonies on top of, you know, riffs and stuff. And like on four tracks and stuff, that just really like brought, brought about a whole different way of writing. And so sound collage in general Mm -hmm. is something that I feel like is, is the craft of, I don't want to assume for you either, but I kind of feel like, you know, with, with what you do too, oh, yeah. it's a lot of piecing things together. And yeah. I mean, even if I'm involved in something that's more traditional, like rock based, like Agaloc or sculptured, I'm always kind of like looking at this, like sound collage blueprint in a way. Um, because like my absolute favorite records, not all of them, but a lot of them, like, like Mr. Bungle's disco volante, like that's, there's a lot of like rock based instrumentation, but that is just, it's just a, a wealth of sound collage and experimentation. And 
the records I do solo or like the snares records, things like that. It's very, very much sound collage. And that's where my brain goes to the most, I think, because it's, it challenges me the most and it's the most immersive. And the older I get, I want my artistic experiences, my listening experiences. I want them to be all encompassing and totally immersive. Um, I want things to just take me over. And as my friend, Michael once told me, just blast the thoughts out of my mind. And that's what I want. So that's what I try to create. And that's what I'm looking for. If it's a more traditional band then I want that, I want that wall of sound, you know, I want that, like, I'm, I've been listening to a lot of things like, uh, Despel Omega and Profanatica and, and, uh, blasphemy and things that are just like balls to the wall in your face all the time. Because I, I, that's, that's how I still my, my mind. That's how I keep my thoughts in check. And uh, sound collage does that for me too. Just it's that challenge of like trying to track exactly what's going on and all these different elements and different layers. Totally. Yeah. 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 Um, I, you know, this is funny. I, I recently finished uh, Daniel Lake's USBM book. Yeah. And I read every word, which I didn't think I was going to because there are a few bands in there I didn't really know or didn't really care about. Um, but I learned something about you, which kind of shocked me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Old lady drivers. I had no idea that was such a thing for you. Yeah. I, uh, you know, when you released the old lady drivers shirt, right? Yeah. Like I thought, and you were telling me, I thought, actually, I thought you knew that because like, yeah, my sort of an initial, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say like, that's what got me into extreme metal. But when I was in whatever grade that movie brain scan came out. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, Edward Furlong was a kid from Terminator two. It was like kind mm-hmm. of his second movie. And, you know, we were roughly, <clears throat> I don't know, like maybe the same age. I kind of had like a boy crush on him, <laughs> you know, on Edward Furlong? like just yeah. <laughs> like, I want to be that cool, you yeah. know? Uh-huh. Um, and so, you know, I think that was what got me to see the film. Um, and it was, you know, it's not great. I'm it, not sure I still I've seen think it. it's, it's yeah i don't know if it's worth seeing but there's this kind of scene um where like you know he's he's killing people but it's a video game but it's real life oh my god you know right and yeah <clears throat> he finds that you know he's like severed someone's foot and it's in a freezer and they open it up and there's this just snarling vocal of <laughs> alan you know yeah and it's old lady drives the musical dimensions of sleaze yeah. and so yeah, after that, after watching that, I bought the soundtrack, which wasn't an easy feat. Um, it was through Down in the Valley here, you know. I remember that place. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, and um, yeah, so that that's how I ended up kind of. Uh, yeah, it was that was one of the steps. I think the biggest step for me was, you know, my mother driving Nick and I to Nightfall Records when we were fourteen. <laughs> and subsequently yep. working there two years later. That's right. You worked there. I, I find like old lady drivers is such an interesting gateway. I mean, yeah. people always say like, Oh, it was in flames or, you know, something like that. Um, but yeah, old lady drivers, like I barely even know anybody that likes that band, but like, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't even know about their grind career. Like it was, yeah. Um, I just knew about like, um, uh, I don't want to waste time trying to remember album titles, but like, yeah, the, the electronic stuff is so good. Oh, it's so great. You know, they were one of those bands that I definitely followed back in the day. And then just they're in the back of my mind for a really long time. And then, um, over the years I've ended up befriending Plotkin cause he does all my mastering work. Yeah. And one day he's like, Hey, I've got a care package for you coming. And I was like, okay. And it was, uh, all the LPs. So Fuck. it's, formula it's sleaze stack and uh low flux tube it's <laughs> amazing and so uh or no formula was it no formula was not released on on vinyl ever so it's not that one it was just sleaze stack and uh old lo- low flux tube the first one total hag is on vinyl but he didn't have any copies and i feel like it might be a bootleg of some sort but it made me revisit those records that I hadn't listened to in a really long time. And yeah, I mean, they, they still hold up and they're so unique and they're so yes. interesting. I I had a crazy experience. I don't know if I ever told you this, but um, I probably not since he, we didn't talk about old, but like I, um, 
<clears throat> I was in um, Brooklyn um, with a friend um, several years ago, and we went to see Unearthly Trance. Okay. And um, oh, I gotta forget the venue. Um, but when we were there, uh, I ran into what was that? Was that Metal Maniacs? You, you'll know him, um, Pascal. 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 Oh yeah. Uh, uh... Tom Pascal. That's it. <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and of course, like he's doing is like, you know, who are you? Oh, right. Yeah. And he sort of, then he introduces me to everyone. Like we've been friends forever. He's like, sure. Right. And he's going up to Stephen O'Malley. He's like, Stephen, I want you to meet a good friend of mine. This is Tanner, you know? And, uh, <laughs> I was like, holy, holy shit, you know? And, uh, I was going up to people. I think he just liked that. I was well read with metal maniacs. Cause I, I loved it, you know? And, um, right. And I did ask him about um, Mysticum kicking his ass. I remember that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that I was do. like so. Maybe that's actually why it was like you know, like <laughs> holding on to me because I, I had some had some shit. Yeah, some dirt. Anyway, uh, it was really funny, and we had a great time. And at the end of the night, um, like everyone in Connate was there. And okay, yeah. So it was a Alan, Stephen, mm -hmm. um, James. Um, maybe that, actually, that was that was it. Just those three, not. Not, not whoever else. Um, but at the end of it, you know, like the um, person I was with, like her friend, um, I think, I don't know. They, they're clearly, anyway, they're, they're all like friends, I think with, with yeah. James. Yeah. And so we got to hang around a little too long. And of course, all a little too much to drink. And I was like, yeah, I have to fucking say this. You have to say like, something. Yeah. Brain scan the foot. <laughs> and they are, and they're all like, <laughs> just, they're like, oh my god, the foot. Yeah, so I'm, there I am, just that's like, great. You know, shit, shit faced. Like, you guys got into everything. You know, it's yeah. real embarrassing. Oh, and then of awesome. course, you know, I keep running into Stephen at festivals and stuff. And I'm like, yeah. do you remember? He's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, oh, that's yeah. So um, John Hom, right before. Well, and actually during, like when he was first starting Agalock in what, 97, he was living in Seattle and he was hanging out with O'Malley a lot. And this is yeah. when O'Malley was doing Descent, Descent Magazine and he was doing uh, all the graphic design for Misanthropy and, you mm -hmm. know, he did fucking Emperor Records and all this. Um, he and John hung out a lot because John is also a, a graphic designer and... Uh, then they kind of, you know, he moved away from Seattle and they kind of fell out of touch and then it was kind of similar for us. Like we just kept playing these festivals and these shows where O'Malley was performing or just attending. And we ran into him so many times and he would just like not leave John alone. It was so funny. And like, we'd just be trying to get like ready to go on stage or just eat or just like go to bed or something. And he'd be like, Hey John, like come hang out. And so like one year we were at Roadburn, he's there. He came to our show in LA for some reason, like all these festivals and like, there is O'Malley and the, the same thing ended up happening with us, um, with what's his, butt, uh, the drummer of Deicide, Steve Osheim. Oh yeah. I've heard these. Stories. Yeah. I'm <laughs> sure really you, I'm sure Aesop's told you many times, but, yeah. uh, yeah, long story short, he became one of those people that would follow us around all over the place. And he was, uh, very happy to drink our backstage beer and, uh, hit on the opening band and pass out in the green room. Real charmer. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was one of those moments that was surreal. Like Don and I are sitting there watching Steve Osheim, like help himself to our beers. And we're like, the world is so weird. It wasn't that long ago that like I had a poster of deicide on my bedroom wall as a teenager. And now here I am like hanging out with Steve Osheim. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then Mike Browning shows up. And we're like, holy shit, it's Mike Browning. And he was like the sweetest dude, like just amazing, amazing guy. And then we're hanging out with guys from Deicide and Nocturnus and Jen from the uh, Jenna Torturers was there. It was Jesus. Yeah. 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 Crazy experience. But that's what happens at festivals. Yeah. Som I mean, sometimes. Yeah. It's, it's great. Yeah. I love being around, I love being around people. I have no business being around. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> like Jason too. Walton. Yeah. <laughs> like Tanner Anderson. Yeah. Um, when Agalock played Roadburn, I found myself, well, not only was the lineup insane, it was disembowelment, Agalock, 
over Voivod and Killing Joke on the same stage, which should never happen. Um, <laughs> but backstage, I was hanging out with uh, Ivar from Enslaved, um, Garm, O'Malley, uh, and then uh, what's his name? Um, I never know how to pronounce it. Zral from Vedwenzenda. Oh, uh, I don't. I don't know how to pronounce that either. C Z R A L. Yeah. And that was. It was just one of those moments. I mean, just looking around, I'm like, this is just so weird. Like all these like luminaries in one room and here I am in the corner, just trying not to be a dork. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I'm trying to remember if that's, I feel like that hasn't happened to me cause I haven't played a, f- a festival that like had a lot of like old, like I haven't played a festival like Maryland death fest where it's like, right. Hey, let's, let's bring all these killer bands together you know yeah Yeah. like yeah no it definitely happens there i um spent a strange drunken night with the guys from absu in a hotel room and the guys from vector and that was interesting at mdf um yeah just shared elevators with morbid angel just strange strange stuff but uh yeah always fun i love i love doing that i'm going to mdf this year not performing, oh, yeah. but just attending. And I'm, I'm excited. It's been a long time since I've done anything like that. Yeah. Way less stressful, probably <laughs> way less stressful. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I, it, it's kind of a double-edged sword for me. Like I love performing. So like, yeah, I'd be killer to like go and play, but it's also nice to, I've never really attended festivals that I haven't played. So yeah, I think migration no, it, was the first one. <laughs> I swear playing shows is what gets me out of the house to like know what's happening. <laughs> like, yeah, I, yeah, especially if it wasn't for Panopticon, I feel like I <laughs> wouldn't have right. any excuse to go. I don't know, but I need a lot of encouragement, especially the pandemic's taught me that too. Like, yeah. holy shit, I've lost, not lost touch with people, but I realize like people made a lot of effort to see me, especially, you know, when I was like bartending or something, they'd come on right. up or, any time and and now that all that shit's gone it's like oh <laughs> i am, right i actually have to work at my friendships <laughs> <laughs> that's the worst man i, I know it's, i can't stand it god um, it's so annoying when was the last show when and what was the last show that you played um interestingly enough do you remember that part of the summer when we all thought the pandemic was over <laughs> I do remember that. Yes. Yeah. So I played, um, so at Shadow Woods in uh, Maryland. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. How was and that? It was, you know, it was cool. It's a, a weird festival. Um, not in a bad way or anything. It's just like, you know, there's a culture around it. There's a lot of inside jokes yeah. with the people that are there. Um, and when we got there, it was, uh, like torrential downpour. Oh yeah. That's I mean, rough. like it was like a river carved out. I guess yeah. the stage like, it was just horrible. I felt so bad uh, for bands and stuff. And yeah. So anyway, but like I, it, it did go okay. Um, yeah. I don't know what to say. It was, it was a fest. It was fun. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't been to that one. Um, and you have some shows coming up too, right? Yeah. Um, this year? With Panopticon, I were doing, it's still up in the air if we're, a couple of things I don't know if I can announce. I say it like it's such a big deal, but you know how it is, you know. Yeah, I totally know how. But it we is. are doing a, a Euro tour in nice. August and September, and okay. then with Obsequia, we've got Northwest Terror Fest and Fire in the Mountains, which right. is going to be intense. Just going to be awesome. I need to fly those guys over to rehearse. <laughs> right. Yeah. Soon. Good God, it's sneaking up. Yeah, it really is. What is it? it yes, yeah, it's February. Yeah. I can't tell you like how stupid it was to decide to play live with Obsequi. I like, uh, it, <laughs> well, I've lost so much money. I've like, <laughs> I just didn't think this through at all. You know, like, yeah, uh, I, yeah, I actually, I wanted to talk to you about this a little bit. Cause we have, we have talked about it in person a few times, but you know, it's just, it's so funny to me because I remember a couple times um, talking with both you and Austin and both of you guys were like, nah, we're not and I'm not going to play live. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, they touch on that on the, in the USBM book too, a little bit, um, mostly with Austin, but, 
like of of course you're allowed to change your mind. I'm not trying to give you shit about it, but it, oh, it yeah. just it was kind of funny because both of you were just and very much so. Austin was just like, no, that's not going to happen. And uh, yeah, now it's definitely happening. Um, I totally know what you mean about like. I mean, I don't know if I'd call it a, like a mistake or like you shouldn't have done it, but it, it it opens it up to like a whole new world of complications and problems. Yeah, just a lot of things. I mean, I I think when you start a, a project, because I, I still think of Obsecca as a project, you know, yeah. like it's, um, but when you make it a band, it becomes a cover band, you know, like uh, unless yeah. you really work at it. And I mean, I think this time will be, um, better. Not that it wasn't before, but I mean, I was just, you know, I think I'm always going to expect more and I, I don't mean to say it wasn't whatever. You know, I'm going to try right. and, <laughs> I'm going to move fast, but yeah, like, I don't know. Um, it's just difficult because like, I don't sell shit on Bandcamp, like, and the last album, of course, I'm, I'm not getting proceeds from, which I'm glad because of the whole, you know, mission with that. But, um, right. There were some things that I was sort of banking on, like, well, I'll fund my losses with Obsequia with Panopticon, right. you know, and then the pandemic comes in and, yep. you know, you've, you've already flown in people twice and shit's getting canceled, you know, yep. And, yep. you know, it is. So yeah. I don't know. Yeah. That's um, crazy. And of what? course, like Owen is moving to Ireland. So there's a whole lot of uncertainty and he's right. like, postponed his move just to play these shows so it's like it's not like <laughs> we could pull out or something right. you know and be like oh yeah. it's just not like i'm not really feeling it <laughs> yeah i don't really yeah. want to do these anymore <laughs> like you've yeah. rearranged your life but you know that's yeah. your fault <laughs> yeah well i'm i'm hoping to see you at northwest terror fest that'll be that'll be awesome yeah, um, that, yeah. that's gonna be a cool festival too i'm i've never seen repulsion so i'm really excited to see repulsion yeah uh ludicra of course that's yeah just insane um get to see my buddy Aesop again uh yeah. it was really funny actually i w went to a a party a solstice party here and uh one of my very good friends through the solstice party and his buddy came and his friend's girlfriend was christy from ludicra and so she walks in and i was like what the fuck and she looked at me and we looked at each other and she's like Jason? I'm like, oh my God. So like, I had no idea she was even living in Portland, but now she's here and it's so weird. Like I never run into people like that, especially not at somebody else's house. Yeah. And that's... yeah, it was very strange. So it was good to see her. I haven't seen most of those ludicrous people for a really long time. Shit. I haven't seen Aesop since it's been a couple of years now. It's so weird that's... how things change like that. Yeah. That's a shame. He seems like, uh, I don't know if I could see Ace up uh, frequently. I would. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. No, I love that guy. Yeah, he's so funny. Have you checked out any of his stuff he's done post Agalock? Yes, um, uh, I'm. I'm gonna bomb some of the names of these, but um, mm -hmm. his because he has like a couple labels. I can't tell if they're yeah. his or not. But yeah, yeah I've. Um, I haven't like, checked out all of it, but I've definitely like Bloody um, Fortress. And yes. Yeah. 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 Really weird shit. <laughs> and he's doing, Oh God, there's one that he sent me like, uh, that's going to be a seven inch or something. It was so sick. Oh, the black was, metal thing. Yes. And yeah, uh, like, whoa, like it's like woggle, woggle something W O H G L E or something. I don't even know. Yeah. 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 It's going to be a seven inch and it's like a wrath of the tyrant emperor type of thing. Yeah. It was just unreal. Yeah. Yeah. So good. He's got this really cool kind of like, I wouldn't feel comfortable calling it pop punk, but definitely punk, but really catchy kind of like an adolescence type of thing. I'm struggling to think of the name of it right now, but that was really, really good too. I think that just, just came out, but yeah, he's been pretty prolific with like the weird shit and he's got this new thing, uh, nefarious scenarios. Yeah. That he's done. I think that's one. Yeah. Yeah. That guy's a maniac. He has so many weird things that he's into. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad he's seeing them all realized. I mean, that's amazing. Yeah. I think he's really focused his energy and he's like, I don't have to tour the world with Agalock anymore or with Ludicra 
or with yeah. more and more borrows. Like this is all I, all I have. So I'm just going to sit in my room and make dungeon synth, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like dungeon synth met, mixed with negative land or something like that. Yeah. That's, that's the life trade. Yeah. yeah. He's living the dream. Um, <clears throat> so Panopticon, that's been a pretty big beast lately. Um, how are those shows and like, how did, and how did you become a part of Panopticon, um, for the live shows? Well, um, the, yeah, it's sort of like, sort of like that book you were talking about where it's like, um, you know, Adam Bartlett got Austin to play live, but at the brewery, we would always be like, he would always just egg me on. He'd be like, Hey, you need to play live with Obsequiae. And I was like, no, no. And he's like, if you do it, I'll do it. (laughs) <laughs> and he would say that. And, and I think he just knew that I wouldn't. Right. But I fucking did. You did. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, Hey, I'm rehearsing. And, and I, it was almost like, you know, are you, are you next? And then I started actually asking him and then Bartlett comes in and he, you know, he actually sold him. He like fed him whiskey and was like, yeah, Hey, you know, you're going to disappoint all these people. Like you gotta, this is a big thing. You know, you, you gotta do this. Yeah. So, he does it, you know, and to be fair on the record, Adam Bartlett sealed the deal, but Austin promised me that if I did it, he would do it. Right. So anyway, <laughs> uh, so yeah, the first show was like a test run at the brewery and I right. just did some vocals. Um, and then at migration, I just did vocals on the last song and right. it sort of just kept happening where I would come up and do vocals. And then I think after their first, Cause it was just like the next year I joined as a keyboard player. Cause they're like, we, we need a keyboard player. And I was right. like, I can't play. That's like the one thing I feel like the worst at, <laughs> but you know, I always, as I always tell the sound guy, I'm like, Hey, um, can you mix me like the guitars reverb? Cause that's what I'm doing oh, here. Yeah. You know? I like that. Um, yeah. Holy yeah. shit. Talk about like no pressure, you know, like when right. we played Roadburn, everyone's like, Oh shit. You know, it's like sweating and stuff. And I'm just like, you're like, I'm just cool. Yeah. I'm just in the background, I, man. <laughs> I, I hold C, you know, yeah. like, <laughs> and then I, uh, you know, and then I do, do noise daddy stuff. Like, you know, twist a couple knobs and stuff right. and look like I'm doing far more. Uh-huh. Um, and no one's looking at me cause no one should look at a keyboard player. You know what I mean? You should always kind of be, unless you're back, unless you're Roddy bottom from faith, no more. Cause he like jumps in the air and like, he always wears crazy outfits and stuff like that. But See, we're going to have to split the cut differently if I did that stuff. That's you know? true. Like, I can't. Or, what about the guy from Dimu? He has, like, the giant top hat, like, in Throne Darkness era. He's, like, fucking giant top hat. Like, maybe that's what you should do is get some kind of, I don't know, top hat or something like that. Austin's encouraged the top hat, actually, <laughs> uh, with Dimu. But, uh, <laughs> no, I'm, I don't know. I think I really think it's distracting i think like especially the role i have in it it's nice to kind of be a little bit off stage and then yep. kind of like yep. when it's time to do vocals like bring the microphone out right and stuff like that so i think we'll do more of that more kind of like call and response vocals right but did you know that i played keyboards for a band live once i told you this story didn't i oh i think i know what band yeah what is it is it is it rhyme with cold colors? Yes, it does. <laughs> yes, it rhymes with cold colors because it is cold colors. Yeah. Uh, what, what metal fest was that? Milwaukee Metal Fest. Yeah, but Play- what year? Oh, um, I want to say ninety nine. Okay. You oh Lord of All Desires played that year. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure Lord of All Desires Minnesota played that year. metal history here. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think it was 99. We played a pretty small room. It was right after Pale Folklore came out. And the first time meeting Andreas from the end. And while we were playing, In Flames was playing in the room across from us. So everybody was at In Flames. <laughs> yeah. Um, but also Atrocity played, which sounds amazing, but they were just doing their 80s covers. So not so amazing. Um the gathering played, which was amazing. And that was way before I knew those guys. So that was really cool. Yeah. Um, there's a few good shows, but man, I played, I think cold Callers played maybe four or five songs and I played keyboards on two or three. 
And I felt really self-conscious about just standing there behind yeah, this fucking sucks. Yamaha oh. keyboard. And I'm not doing anything. Yeah. And I, no, you can't. Uh, and, I, and I can't pretend to do anything because it's just a fucking little Yamaha. I mean, it's like it's literally the keyboard I use to create like ELS and yeah. like the early nothing records. Like there's nothing on there. So I just decided it, the songs I'm not playing, I'm just going to lay down on the stage. And I, I just laid down and nobody was very happy that I did that. But I'm like, <laughs> hell no! <laughs> I don't want to stand here like a fucking dork. So I'm just gonna lay just, down like, like an asshole. While you were laying down, like if you don't like it, you can go watch in flames. <laughs> yeah, go go see the Jester race. It's just right across the the way there. Oh, not even in '99. That was something else. Something bad. Everything after that album was bad, in my opinion. What year is Jester race? '96. '96. Yeah. Horacle was after Jester race. Yeah, which was uh, I feel like it's 98 something maybe. I feel like it might have even been the next year. Um I don't really? know. As for what a fan I, I am of the Just Race and Subterranean yeah. um and Lunar String. I've of course. Like I I just kind of I think the last time I checked the years and that stuff I was surprised. I was like, "Holy shit, that happened quick." Okay. I think it sort of was one of the a common theme of getting into metal was like 2 years behind every album I liked. <laughs> oh, okay. You know? Yeah. Uh-huh. Like when I when I bought I bought the Somberlane first, fuck. for example. Anyway, Som- I don't want to. Yeah. Don't don't Somber let me Lane. fuck up this whole story. You're talking about <laughs> laying down on stage. Yeah. No, it sucks. No. You got to know what to do when you're playing a keyboard and and then you're not. You know what do you do? You hide behind the curtain. Yeah. I mean, if you're if you're like Arcturus, then you're playing every song all the time. But if you're Jason Walton with Cold Colors, you're playing a few <laughs> notes here and there. Like you said, you're holding down a C for a little bit and you might do like a fifth and that's it. And then yeah, I just like switch to bell chimes. Check this shit out. <laughs> I hope everyone hears it, but I hope it's not too loud. Right. You know, because if it's too loud, that Yamaha bullshit is going to come through too much. And yeah. yeah, yeah. Anything rhythmic on the keyboard is not my strong suit either. So, oh, my God, Jason, at Migration, um, the one in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. They had. Uh, there were these sound guys there and my synths, uh, um, um, Waldorf Blofeld, you know, so it's like a, it's a pretty sick synth that I mm-hmm. use for Panopticon. And so they're all talking about all this shit, you know, and like, they're like, what amp are you running? And I was like, oh, I'm just going DI, DI stereo. Yeah. And they're like, huh. And they're <laughs> talking about all the stuff to do. And I, and we were talking about, you know, elect- electronic music. And I, I, I knew I was like, not, I, I they were having a conversation and I was just kind of nodding like, yeah, I know, I know what you're talking about, you know, yeah, and all this stuff, but they like genuinely seemed disappointed in me when I, because played. you didn't want to, because you didn't want to use didn't an do all the sick, well, I, just cause I didn't do all the sick Blofeld shit, you know what I oh, mean? I, see. I don't know. I gotcha. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, but to me, I feel like, holy shit, you know, it was really fun building choirs from scratch or a violin. Oh, that's from amazing. Scratch. Yeah. yeah. I didn't want to just like get, um, you know, an emulator synth or something. Right. <laughs> that's, that's really funny. Um, yeah. So nobody was really happy with my choice, but I also <laughs> just felt like I was kind of, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of a stupid, weird choice, but also like there's hardly anybody there. And I was super uncomfortable with just standing there and not doing anything. So yeah, I did wear a Fantomas shirt. At least you um, met like the typical enthusiasm for cold colors. Fans, yes. So. Yeah. No, I think that was, that was pretty typical. Um, I, I'm only saying that cause I'm going to move in a few months and Brian can't beat me up. <laughs> he's, he doesn't live there anymore. Oh, he doesn't Oh shit. No, he All moved right. to Denver. Oh, actually he moved to Boston. No, he moved to Denver. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> See you everywhere. I heard what you said, motherfucker. No, to be fair. And I'm being serious. I, I actually, um, I think the bass Jaden, the bass player, came into the brewery a couple times, and mm-hmm. like, yeah, there were some, a couple songs they had that sounded like kind of like old amorphous recently. That were actually pretty good. Yeah, yeah, um, they, they kind of did a bit of that amorphous, like sentenced type of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but no. I, I don't remember liking them a lot when I was younger. Um, yeah, like during that earlier. Yeah. Well, I mean, they just Brian moved to Denver like last year, I think. And killed Cold Colors. So oh. Cold Colors, I mean, talk about longevity. I mean, it's like 
96, 97 until last year. I mean, that's, yeah, that's a long time. I have no idea why he moved. Um, but I, you know what he, what I did find out though, he was playing with Rob Lowe in Rob Lowe's, Lowe's new band. Oh, is that Tyrant? No, From Grief, Grief Collector. Grief, grief, sorry. He's in like, he does so much session shit. And yeah. I, I saw that there was a Minnesota band that he was singing in and I was like, what? Yeah. Rob, Rob Lowe. <laughs> No, Brian Hubner was playing guitar with Rob Lowe. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. yeah crazy. Um, but I haven't, I haven't talked to him in forever. He ordered a Ross Algethi shirt from me. Oh, that's the, sick. Yeah. And the, the shipping was to Denver. And then I know a guy that lives in Denver. No, he lives in Chicago, but told me, Hey, Brian moved to Denver. I'm like, oh, that's so weird. But I haven't, I haven't talked to Brian in years and years, but yeah, playing with fucking Rob Lowe. That's impressive, man. That's yeah, really awesome. That early the solitude best, of Turner stuff. The best, the best candle mass singer of all time, according to Rob Lowe. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's true. I think. Well, I, um, yeah, I can I can believe that. Uh, <laughs> speaking of music, uh, yeah. in flames or dark tranquility. Um. Okay, this is this is really hard um, because Sky Dancer, Dark Tranquility is sort of the album I feel like has had such a lasting impact on me. Mm-hmm. And actually, when we were talking about it the first time we ever talked about, it, I remember you yeah. were like, "I know it was a little flowery for me," and I remember just thinking, "That's the best that's way. The, that's the way it I should lo- be." Because <laughs> I love those like beautiful florid riffs, you know. Uh-huh. And, um, anyway. I love how chaotic it is. I love, you know, like Sabat on like yeah. history of a time to come or dreaming uh-huh. for like the Martin's just like doing his vocals are just like oh, yeah. nonstop. Mm-hmm. Um, they didn't quite have that going on, but if you ever read those lyrics and try and wrap your head around them being like 16 yeah, and, and writing these, like, I, I mean, they're beautiful. They're, yeah, they are. No one should be writing stuff like, and then the music is just like, totally insane Mm -hmm. i don't know i just i can't wrap my head around that fucking album but in flames is a different band you know they've always had a pop sensibility whereas dark tranquility um even on the seven inch before um especially a moonclad reflection there's another one too but yeah they've always had the sort of non-linear chaos like Mm -hmm. just total chaos of riffing and melodies i mean i think i think it really culminated in the in the gallery that might be my favorite one because it is just so over the top, like, and and heavy, like just heavy as shit. So I think I'm, it's not like I don't like it, but I, mm-hmm. I think I like the first few songs off the mind's eye mm-hmm. more. Yeah. And, uh, the, the that's EP, a great one too. Enter suicidal angels might be some of the mm-hmm. same songs that were on there, but like the, the gallery, I liked it, uh, but I, but it didn't have stain power for me i don't know just there were so many bands like sacrilege you know like yeah. the fifth season especially mm-hmm. not that the first one's bad or anything but that album like all those black sun bands were just kind of like they're so technically able like i, I compare like the f- fifth season or whatever it is to by sacrilege to the gallery and i just yeah. kind of i i pick sacrilege my favorite dark tranquility release is of chaos and eternal night Oh yeah, that's a sick, sick EP. Yeah, yeah. Within the flaming shades of fall, that's yes, that's, that's my shit because the bass is so prominent on that yes. song and oh, so Jason. hooky. Yes. Yeah. Oh god, fuck yeah. the the way that comes about is is just incredible. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, so, so good. good, so good. Um, but yeah, that's like I don't want to say that I don't like Scat Answer because that's not accurate. It just didn't hit me the same way that like the Jester Race did. Or Subterranean, Lunar Strain, like those records. Um, but in retrospect, I mean, I haven't listened to it in quite a while, but last time I listened to it, it hit me more. And I think this might sound crazy, but I kind of think in a weird backwards way, Fall of the Leaf kind of prepared me to enjoy Skydancer more, if that makes sense. Wow. That's like, uh, obviously, you mean like the first album or the second? The first. The first. The first, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, which I, I haven't listened to them in a long time either. Yeah, he's wearing um you see Hanan and is wearing a Dark Tranquility long sleeve yeah. on the inside of that too. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's a what, filed records. What was, what was their, what was their, their name before? Um, septic broiler. Is that right? Oh, um, no, um, no. Uh, that's dark tranquilities. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. I have that demo. <laughs> you do? It's like yeah. the actual demo. I, it's a boot. I have the dark tranquility demo. That's, that's a, that's definitely a real one, but you can yeah. just tell, you know, right. So but yeah, septic broiler. Fuck yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Still envious though. How old were they? Like, because they, I think in 1993 they were all 17. Yeah, um, yeah. or 92. I I don't know. But Something talk like about that. like two vocalists like Anders Frieden and Michael yeah. Son. Like, yeah, God, it's such a weird story. And they're all like starting Hammerfall at the same time. Oh, that's that right. Stuff. Yeah, I forgot about you Hammerfall. Know? It's such a I don't know. It's such a weird thing. Yeah. Um, and then pretending they weren't on ceremonial oaths carpet, like <laughs> even like, even like Tompa Lindbergh, I think he's like attributed to it now but for the long yeah. time. They're like, not the same Tompa. It's like, right. What? Yeah. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Uh, how do you feel about dark tranquility these days? I haven't listened to, um, anything. Me either. Uh, yeah. I, I think people think I'm lying <laughs> when I say shit like that. Cause uh, I'll talk about these bands and they're like, you know, they're back together. And it's like, you know, like I feel bad. I haven't listened to like the Eucharist premieres. I listened to like part of the first one and I was like, that's what I thought, <laughs> you know, yeah. mm -hmm. but like, I don't know. It's yeah. Yeah. Dark tranquility before the pandemic played here like every six months. And it was like the weirdest experience. Like I never thought I'd be able to say that in my life, but they played here all the fucking time. And I did check out one of the later records. I have no idea what it is, but it's just a completely different band. And I'm not trying to come down on them, you know, but it definitely was not my thing. Yeah. Definitely seemed like more of a modern metal approach to things. Um, definitely not what I'm into. Yeah, but, I mean, I remember when like the album Haven came out, and I like one of my roommates was like, "Dude, you really should listen to it," and I did, and I was like, "No." Yeah, I, I think that was the last friend that was tried to be like, you know, you really gotta check it out or something like. <laughs> yeah. That. <laughs> yeah, give it a chance, man. Yeah, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. I like I said, I did just briefly, but. It, it's always kind of interesting to like check that shit out. Like, I don't know if you've listened to the new carcass or have any desire to listen to the new carcass. Um, but for me, you know, carcass was completely inspirational and revolutionary. And they're one of my absolute favorite bands. So they're one of those bands that I will, I will follow until there's nothing to follow. Sure. Yeah. And I'm able to compar to compartmentalize it enough to know, like, it's not going to be symphonies. It's not going to be necroticism. It's not even going to be hard work. Is it good? Yeah. It's enjoyable. It's fun. You know? Yeah. It's still fucking Bill Steer. It's still Jeff Walker. Those guitar tones are unmistakable. The writing's there. Yeah. Yeah. The new drummer is sick. Um, the artwork is great. There's a couple moments that are maybe a little bit cheesy for me, but yeah, I still, I still buy it when it comes out and I still like it, but it's, you know, definitely not the same, but I'm also not expecting it to be the same. Yeah. I don't know that I have, <clears throat> I don't know. That I've actually ever had bands like that. Um, cause kind of, like I said, like, especially we're going to nightfall when we just get all these, like, you know, whatever Opeth album came out after, um, my arms rehearse or whatever. Blackwater I park. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know. Um, but like we got like all those copies in and all these people who had never seen come in the store came in and bought it and stuff like that kind of a thing. And, and I don't know, it's not like there's a little bit of like being young and being like, this is mine, you know, oh, if you man. see someone yeah. wearing the same shirt, you know, you're uh -huh. like, Oh, this is fucking done. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. And it's something like that. But like, um, I kind of feel like I've, I'm almost because of that stuff, like having, known I was always late to the party. It's like the theme of my life with metal, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? Um, and, um, I, I just never really got attached to bands. I got, I got attached to albums. So, oh, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. so it's not even fair for me to be like, this band sucks or something, you know, like, right. it, it, I just, some, some of them, I feel like I never really gave a chance because I just latched onto something. And there was so much 
there's so many great albums to latch on to. There's tons. Then. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, that's true. Uh, you brought up the somber lane. Yeah. Uh, dissection is one of those bands for me that I always loved it. I always knew it was absolute top notch, but also in retrospect, when I listen to those records, they're even better than I remember, especially storm of the lights, Bane. And to me, dissection is one of the absolute finest moments in extreme metal ever. Yeah. I don't, you're not going to meet a lot of resistance here. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't think so. But, but I appreciate how brave you are. <laughs> <laughs> My hot take dissection yeah. rules. No, it's, I think some people really did have, like, it's funny to think about, but I mean, like I kind of was one of them too, where I almost felt guilty about how much I liked storm of the lights, Bane. Yeah. Um, because I was like, this is not the same as a song. It's more right. rocky, you know, and yeah. I was like, cause I, I, I've had this conversation the other day about like just traditional heavy metal where like, where's my threshold, you know? And it's like, if there is a song about a knight saving a kingdom, rescuing uh -huh. a maiden, that kind yeah. of chivalry <laughs> kind of bullshit, you know, like sure, whatever it's yeah. pr probably lame, but it's going to fucking rule. I'll bet, right. you know? <laughs> um, but like, if they have a song that comes up next, that's like, you know, the, my rock and roll girl or something, you know, like yeah. that's the song. Uh -huh. It's like, fuck that. Fuck yep. hard rock. Yep. I feel like in, in some ways, as much as I totally don't give a shit about second wave black metal in a lot of ways, I feel like that gave us permission to have fun again, I, oh, it, like it with, with traditional yeah. heavy metal. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. now there's all these bands that are like doing that stuff now too within it. Yeah. And they're like, just kind of, it's like this post pizza thrash. Who the fuck am I? Right. Kind of yeah. writing, you know. Yeah, I'd rather have like, the pizza thrash. Do that. Yeah, I'd, I'd rather yeah. have the pizza thrash for sure. Yeah, I I'd rather have the pizza. I'd rather have the pizza for sure. Or yeah. a calzone. Oh man, nice calzone. I'll pick my own thrash. Thank you. It'll be merciless <laughs> and <laughs> merciless as in the band, or merciless oh, yes. as in the word. <laughs> yeah, I'll listen to merciless and have uh, have some thin crust from. Oh my god! I had more god, to Delahead that good. in Somerville, Massachusetts. Is I think Ooh. so far my favorite pizza I've had during really? the pandemic. Yeah, Somerville, Massachusetts. Wow! Shout out to More to Delahead, greatest pizza. <laughs> Our new sponsor. Um, they also have a uh, a sauce that you can put on your face to help with itch and uh, sensitivity of skin when shaving. They do not. No, I just remember we had the the head of the show we had a sponsor now we yes have, i know yeah. the irritation yeah 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 uh, actually that that might kind of help i mean might be kind of soothing you probably look yeah, really cool too there's basil in there i think herbs are supposed to be oh yeah for you yeah they're from the they're from the ground they're from the ground that's right yeah <laughs> pizza's from the ground pizza uh i remember one time aesop we're back to aesop now was telling me about this pizza thrash band that Ludica played with i think in ohio and they had like an album or a song that was the chorus. Was it the chorus? I can't remember. Something to do with the band was, oh shit, there's a pizza in the pit. <laughs> and I think about that all the time. <laughs> I don't know whether it's amazing or just disgusting that there's actually something like you say pizza thrash and I know what you're talking about. Like, oh, I don't yeah, know. And that's. I don't know if that should be a thing. Like, should the world allow for that to exist? Maybe. I don't know. Pizza rules. So I don't know. I'm, I, I am, I am definitely not the, um, the person to ask. I feel like <laughs> a bystander to this chaos, you know, all around. And you know what? There's so many times I've said something like really judgmental about a, a band or music or something. Mm -hmm. And then I, I absolutely, swallow my words yeah you know it right? happens to me it's just about time. like i don't know i don't mean to like get fucking real or serious or something but right it does sometimes just take like meeting someone and <laughs> being like oh fuck man you're just having fun i'm sorry yeah. i know <laughs> it's like, exactly it it's exactly yeah. it yeah so yeah i i um when i first heard morbid angel i hated them absolutely hated them for a long time and now they're having fun because i was having too much fun <laughs> No, it's just it was just one of those things though, and I I told everybody I could like I don't get it, man. It's, the, the riffs are bullshit, and now like in retrospect, I'm talking about fucking blessed are the sick. Like, 
Not what abominations of celebration. Not a bus. It is birthday boy or all the other parties. <laughs> the pizza parties. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You're really good on your feet. Like just thinking of like these little funny. I'm the album Groucho titles. Marx of Castle Metal. Jason. You really are. You really are. Yeah. I've By had the- a great time tonight, but this wasn't it. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> yeah. Tip your waitress. Yeah. Uh, you drew an awesome castle inside of Daniel's copy of his book. That was really cool. Oh my god! Yeah, I forgot about that. I don't. I don't remember what it looked like, but yeah, it was, it was a cool look. It was really funny for me to like flip through his book because um, he, you know, he's like, "Here, will you sign this book?" And I'm looking through it. And I'm like, "Oh, there's there's Tanner's thing with like a little drawing of a castle," and like that was super cool. Do you remember Edgefield? Do I remember what Edgefield here? Edgefield. Um, last time you were in town, we went there. It's, uh, it's a McMinimans. It has like all the, oh, all the grounds yeah. and the little red shed and Say stuff. Say no more. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, John, Don and I took Daniel there and showed him the grounds. We went to the little red shed, you know, like did all the, like the Agaloki and stuff. Um, and we had a blast, but <laughs> John, <laughs> John brought him this like moisturizing cream. And told Daniel it was for his nipples. Was it pizza sauce? I, that's exactly what I was going to say. I wish it would have been pizza sauce <laughs> yeah. because it yeah. would have helped with the irritation. You're kidding me. This is really for Daniel's nipples? Um, it, just nipples in general. It was a very strange thing to do. And Daniel, Nobody brought it for Daniel because... Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's just like a moisturizing cream. And... Uh, Daniel said that was by far the strangest thing that anybody had brought him on his little tour that he did. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. It was really great. Uh, but yeah, we had, a, we had a blast at Edgefield. Um, we went inside all around the grounds, got a few beers. He was a super fun guy. I, I enjoyed spending time with him quite a bit. Yeah. He came in and he, he was up at Austin's and I went up. Um, and saw oh yeah. Him and then- I saw a photo from there. Yeah. Yeah, and then he came to that uh, that festival I was talking about. So I got to see him there. Oh, Shadowitz? Okay. Well, and he lives in Maryland, so that, yeah. that makes sense. But yeah. He's a great dude. He's, yeah, really I, cool. I had him on the, actually, is it my last episode? Yes, I had him on recently. Was, yeah, had him on J- recently. January. Okay, yeah. Yeah, he's a, he's a super fun guy, really knowledgeable, um, really good at being diplomatic about things like Graham Lyle's key. Jesus, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I actually did think the I don't remember it. Um, I don't mean to waste breath or anything, but like that introduction was so well written. Um, oh, from to, from Tom G. Warrior. No, well, that is I remember too. But just the bad shit and black metal thing. Oh yeah, um, uh huh. It was just I think it was a real. It was a pretty. Uh, oh, it was good. It yeah. was a good preface. Mm-hmm. There are some things I think we all wrestle with, mm-hmm. you know, um, like how do God, how do you say this to a stranger? How do you say this to a, a fan or something, you know, right. just like the typical, like, Oh, I used to like this, but then I found out or whatever. And I just think that as fucking tired as that conversation can get, yeah. um, that he just, he did a great job. I think so too. Yeah. We talked about that a little bit in person and it's one of those things, like I told him it's kind of too bad. You have to do that. But also, yeah, with with literally every band, God, it's like yeah. being a therapist. Yeah, it's just there's such a history to to black metal um, and the evil things that people do and the bad behavior, and it's just too bad that he has to say anything. But I think it was necessary. Yeah, it was. But yeah, it was handled really well. Um, of course, I think his own admission, like you'd always want more bands in there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was really happy to see masochist mentioned, honestly, just cause I, f- I wasn't sure that that was really, I don't know if I ever told you this, but like I, at first I turned down the interview for that book and so did oh, Austin I, completely. Separate. Really? I didn't know that. <laughs> and I remember just telling Dave, it was like one of those things where you understand this and I hope whoever, you know, um, listens, understands it too, that like, it's easy to kind of like have some context around something and be like, say like when I told Dave, I was like, I don't want to be the asshole. That's like, first off, I'm not a black metal band. 
yeah. and also masochist is the only usbm band that matters by you know like and yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's funny it's yeah. if someone told me that i would laugh too but uh-huh. but you can you, you actually try and type that email and not say that but right. try and say it and it, you just it's like having a journal about what an asshole you are and how much weird repressed metal shit is there yeah and i feel like a lot of people <laughs> felt similar i'd be curious about the people who didn't participate but the funny thing is this is how i ended up participating uh-huh. um so i got it was right right when palms was coming out okay and dave's like from 20 bucks men is like hey so um uh, there's a possibility that like obsequi I might have like a feature in decibel you know, in the reviews and stuff. I was like, that doesn't mean like you're the fucking album of the issue. It just means like you're, you're the featured one. You're feature. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that means you get a comic. Yeah. I've been there. You know? And he, and they didn't say it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They didn't say anything, but that year, like everyone, all my friends had that, like Crip Sermon got it. I got to, mm-hmm. you know, I was like, I need a comic. Yeah, you do. So I was like, I just said, if you can put me in a castle yeah in a cartoon then i will do that book <laughs> and so there was no guarantee there was no guarantee but yeah uh that's absolutely what happened oh my god that's and, amazing uh, yep so then i then i did it and i was like god i'm an asshole like i would have done this anyway had i actually talked to daniel or just right engaged with him yeah. instead of like my default like yeah. I'm scared of everything, but I'm going to be stupid about it. Right. You know, like yeah. default. I, my first reaction was I was excited because I've always wanted to be in a book like that. And especially with Agalock being no more, I really wanted the history of Agalock documented in some way. Um, and we have a really nice feature in it. And I'm, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, but so I was excited about it, but I was also like one of the, I mean, one of the main questions for me are like, what, what, us black metal do you think is relevant or like that you enjoy and i'm like i don't know man i mean yeah and also like i agree with you like i never considered agalock a black metal band i mean we yeah have, we have tinges of it of course here and there i mean i think i think i think your work is like barely black metal i mean thank you i mean maybe in yeah. like the it's it's kind of like it's kind of like the Greek black metal adjacent sound in some ways, but I would never, never think of you as being black metal. You can um, define black metal by what it's not, not by what it is. So even if someone's like, it's Satan, it's like, well, maybe to maybe. some, you know, yeah. but like, I just think you can strip away all these things. And the only thing I can think of with Sequoia is like, I know how to use automated delay, yeah. <laughs> you know, and yeah. the vocals are higher register because, yeah. because yeah. they are. It's definitely not death metal. But I, but oh. I think I think that's the the problem. It's like same thing that happened with Agalock. We're definitely not death metal. You can define death metal just yeah. like easily. But if you're not death metal, then you have to be black metal. Like that's those are like that's the binary that people go to. And I'm not trying to rag on Daniel here or anything, but I think Oh, he knows. No, he's and he knows. He's I know. far more nuanced than that book would not that the book made him appear not to be, but yeah. we we had this conversation over you know, he's aware. Yeah. Yeah. But it, I think it is funny. It's like, cause Agalock has been tagged with black metal for quite some time. And I've always been yep. like, well, it's just, it's, you know, not to be that guy, but it's, that's so reductive. And like, would you ever put emperor and Agalock in the same category? Like I wouldn't, I don't know. No. And honestly, like Agalock has always, I always thought of Agalock as dark metal. Yeah. Like, exactly. like actual dark metal. Yeah. And I feel like, that's a lost genre, not just by Bethlehem standards, right? But because like, you know, like you think of like some of the other, the end bands, I remember like mental home. Oh yeah. What uh-huh. the fuck are they? You know, like there are these bands that just kind of existed yeah, and, and still do, but they just kind of don't really quite find or, a home. Or and then bands. black metal. Yeah. yeah. And, and now, now black metal bands like experiment and they still sound like a black metal band that's trying to do that as opposed to someone that started firm. Right. With kind of like, hey, we, we know how to convey, um, um, you know, emotional content with brutal right. music, and it's 
and we have listened to black metal. We have listened to death. Right. Metal. Yeah. I, f- I feel like a lot of the Holy records bands were like that where yeah. they're like, yeah, they could be death metal adjacent. They could be black metal adjacent, but they're wholly their own, like fucking like misanthrope. I mean, holy their what own. a That's weird nice. ass band. Holy you know? their own. <laughs> Did you realize the pun you just dropped? No. What? what? The holy, holy records being wholly their own. <laughs> That was a legenda. Of oh my a joke. god! <laughs> Someone's like, <laughs> "There's one person listening to this yeah. being like these these guys are fucking. They're on it." <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, legenda, man. Oh. I still have a cardboard promo of that. Which um, which one? The first one. Aut- autumnal. Yeah, dude. Yeah. That was. I mean, that was blood is thicker than water, turned into an entire record, and there's nothing better than that. I mean. <laughs> I know Impaled Nazarene aren't too hot on Swami Finland Percolet, but that Blood is Sicker Than Water track is, it's one of those tracks, when I hear it, I'm just in another world instantly. Yeah. And so when Legenda did a whole record like that, the second one's really good too, but the first one's my favorite. Same, um, yeah. What a fucking great record. And Ellen, I mean, shit like that too, like so different, remember, so interesting. Yeah, uh, Ellen's like the Umbersome one yeah yep that band, yeah yeah gotta have those first three somewhere really still. yeah yeah god holy just had the craziest shit sometimes i mean that um misanthrope record uh 1666 theater bazaar do you remember that one i uh i'm trying to think like it no ha- i don't but i'm trying to like i just feel i'm imagining that i own like an old issue of pit that has yeah. like a yeah. feature on it or something yeah you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i'm sure I, it has uh i think that's the one that has like the like the mannequin hand on the front and it's like kind of creepy kind of romantic what a fucking weird label that was like so many weird things Ooh, ooh. speaking of bands that don't fit any convention yeah uh almost a mob by sadness oh dude yeah what a fucking weird ass record i listened to that japanese last flute? year why yeah <laughs> so yeah. just amazing his so vocals weird. are sick as fuck too. He's God. He's just got, he's got such a snarl to him. Yeah, and he's got that accent. Oh, so oh cool. yeah, that was a band that it was one of those things where I would think about it and be like, oh yeah, I love that record. And then I was, I remembered like I don't remember what it's like at all. It's been like twenty years since I've listened to it. So I pulled it out like two years ago, listened to it. And I'm like, this is so fucking weird. Did Did you ever get into Sopra Eternus? So that's like the, uh, the, that's like more synth and like sing, yeah. singing, singing, yeah. right? It's not really metal. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I didn't, but I, I had a friend who was really, I okay. think I was really into that band. Yeah. So good. That stuff's so good. And just, again, just so strange, such strange material. The early I stuff is, that. yeah, the early stuff's very much like program drums and kind of clunky synths. But the later stuff is like it's just these gorgeous arrangements of acoustic guitars and strings and synths and and such a strange character. I mean, it's kind of like non-binary person that supposedly lives in a cave in Germany. Wow, I did yeah. not know that. Yeah, Anna Varney is their name, and I don't know if you have ever seen them, but like shaved head and tons of nose piercings and covers themselves in like this white pancake makeup and long fingernails and flowing gowns and her voice is this lilting like almost like devil doll esque type of thing and oh beautiful yeah that's beautiful stuff uh, yeah I, i'm gonna have to check that out i do have positive associations with uh, the friend that i had that was into it but it was just, okay they had to have they've been around a long ass time oh yeah they? yeah yeah i got yeah so this yeah i got into soap returnus when i lived in minneapolis in like 94 um, okay. the first record came out, um, actually when I had Ramin on the podcast for the first time, like four or five years ago, uh, he, it was the weirdest thing. It was like one of those mind melds that you have with somebody. And he was talking to, we're sharing music back and forth. And he's like, I'm going to play something that's like, it's one of my favorite things, but it's so bizarre. It's so odd. And I'm like, Sopra Eternus. And he's like, <laughs> like his, his jaw dropped. He's like, how the fuck did you know? I'm like, it just came to me. Like you said, just. And he's like, I don't know anybody that knows this band. I'm like, I don't know hardly anybody that knows this band too. But yeah, phenomenal stuff. I love stuff. that shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, have you talked to Ramin lately? 
No, I have not. Yeah, you should. He got his citizenship on Friday. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's Yeah, stoked. I know that was... I know that was... Uh, there are a lot of trying times, I guess, the past couple yeah, of years. Yeah, too. it's been really hard. And it's his birthday tomorrow. Oh, shit. Yeah. Happy birthday, Ramin. If, yeah. If you're, yeah. He might be listening. He's a busy dude these days. So I think he used to keep up with the podcast. But I think that he's got he's got like 46 kids and a dog and a house. And, you know, so <laughs> he's, yeah. a, he's a busy guy. He's <clears throat> uh, great. He, uh, he had a work trip. He had to go to somewhere in Canada. I can't remember where. And he decided to do a layover in Portland. So I saw him like for five hours one night a couple months ago. Took him out to dinner and saw him for a bit. And then he had to go on his way. But yeah. What yeah, a guy. that's fortuitous. I, I, I wish I had I wish I had a reason to uh, drop by R- Ramin's or your place, honestly. Yeah. God. Yeah. That was, that was so fun when you came out to visit. That was, uh, we went to, we went and saw Godspeed. That was cool. Yeah. Yeah. Took up the gorge, went to the coast, all that do stuff. You, do you remember like was it the Bridge of the Gods? Yeah. Is there a, is there a, is that the one with the toll? Yes. Uh-huh. Yep. Well, then we were in the smart car. Yeah. Right? We were in a smart car. Yeah. And then the lady's like, "You two have fun." Yes, right. <laughs> and uh, yeah. and then yeah. remember we were at Multnomah Falls and I yeah. I asked like someone can take our photo and Uh-huh. And then she like whispered to her friend, like, they're so cute. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Everywhere we went. That and was I was amazing. like, are they, do they, are we, are we a couple or a brother? I can't tell. Cause we both squint. We have the same, you know? Yeah. Yeah. When we're, when we're happy and we have those faces that no one should see when we're happy. Yeah. Like those squints. Yeah. I think we look yeah. like twins. If you just shrunk again, shrunk down, <laughs> shrunk you down and made a twin <laughs> division. Yeah. No, that was so funny. I forgot about it. I, I remember the the woman um, at the bridge, but I forgot about that woman being like, oh, they're so cute together. Like That's so that, I have the photo, and it's why I'm laughing. <laughs> That's so great. So that, that laugh on my face is is laughing. It's so her. funny. Yeah. I remember <laughs> we, were, <laughs> we were driving to the coast, and we pull into a gas station. And in Oregon, you can't pump your own gas. Somebody comes out, yeah. an attendant. And I'm sitting there at the pump, and I'm just sitting there, and you're sitting there, and you're like, Oh shit! I'm sorry. And you like get out to like go pay for the gas. <laughs> I forgot I worked at that gas station. <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, Tanner, I'm, I wasn't being like passive aggressive, demanding you buy gas. <laughs> no, I. So I actually told someone about that recently. Oh, really? Because uh, I had no idea. Because in Washington, you pump your own gas. Yeah, and that's where I that's spent far more time there. Yeah. But like, yeah, no one can believe that that it, like. Yeah, it's, it's good it's, though. I mean, way to way to employ people. I mean, that's the whole point is, is employing people. And now it's weird when I go other places, I'm like, fuck, I pump my own fucking gas. Like where's Tanner? (laughs) Where's Tanner? Yeah. (laughs) Hey Tanner, I'm, I'm in fucking, uh, in California. I need you to come pump my gas. Yeah. That was fun. We had a lot of great times. Uh, you, so beautiful. You sat down with, with Ellery, my daughter, and she told you crazy ass stories for a long time. Yes. And uh, we had some good beers. We went to yeah. Salt and Straw. Fuck yeah! Oh, we went to Cascade too. Um, oh yeah, that was sour amazing. Beers. We had we drank everything. Yeah, and we even had like I had that grilled cheese with like that reduction. Oh, that's made right. From the yeah. Fire. Oh god, so good. And then we went to Common after that. Commons. We did. Um, it's not but, there anymore. I think that's where we finished. Oh, that's too yeah. Bad. No, good memory, because I forgot about that place. But yeah, it's not there anymore. For how much we drank, I can't believe I remember that. But Yeah, no, we we did well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that, was, that was super fun. Um, yeah, and we went to that Godspeed show. We went, met up with Nick Woos somewhere. I don't remember where, yeah. but somewhere. That was, yeah, that was at some restaurant um, near the venue, I think. Oh, that makes sense, because he went to Godspeed too, probably. Oh, we went to Blackwater Records across the street from the venue. And you yeah. p- you picked up something there. I don't remember what it was. I don't either. Um, but yeah, God, it was so much fun. Yeah, it was a great trip. Um, and then I came... Last time I was in Minneapolis, I stayed with you. It was the, I came a couple days early to start out the Agaloc Serpent in the Sphere tour. 
Yeah. And we went to somewhere by my old apartment in Northeast. We went yes. to that pub there, had many beers there. Um, and before that, you bought me my one and only tattoo. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, and there's some Minnesota metal history there too, which is amazing because that was Scott Neverdahl from the main yeah. span, Cromlick. And um, he was one of those dudes that, you, you know, like he just, he, he loved grave. He loved entombed. And, yep. and when he was not at the tattoo shop, uh, the uh, old autumnal wind space players, mom owned the tattoo shop for context here. And so we would just tape his CDs and just, bring okay. Them. Yeah. That was that stuff. So he, that dude rules. Um, yeah. 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 That was awesome. Um, I was a little bit nervous and I remember beforehand we were talking about like both getting tattooed, but it was like, what would we do? And like, I mean, we're obviously already a couple of sorts, at least in Oregon, <laughs> yeah. but like, do we get matching tattoos? We're talking about getting that Arcanum, uh, star thing, you know? Um, oh yeah. Yeah. Whatever, whatever that's called. We're talking about getting that. Um, and then I was like, I'm just going to get like some kind of fucking tree and I show up and you're like, Hey Scott, can you just like draw a tree for this guy? And he's like, yeah, sure. No problem. And I was a little nervous, but it was, it was easy. It was cake and it's still my only yeah, tattoo. It rules. Yeah. Yeah. It was so cool. I, you know, what's funny is I actually did get, a uh, uh, what do you call those? Like a ta- I got a tattoo with my friend Reese when we were playing Northwest Tarot with Panopticon. Okay. Um, yeah. And we went to the shop and talked to them the day before, which is good because had we just gone in as drunk as we were that day. Oh man. Probably yeah. would have not let us in, but <laughs> they were, I mean, we weren't, we weren't ridiculous, but you know, we were, it was our day off. And right. um, yeah, anyway, we both got the demo was better on our thighs. I think you, you showed this? me Cause, that. Cause yeah. We went to that. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh God. That's like so good. I wish I had that. That's amazing. Yeah. I love that. I never forget like, cause we, it's a, it's a cassette tape and it just says yeah. the demo was better on the label. And we were so excited the next morning we were in our Airbnb and we go down. Austin's on the second floor. We're like, let's show him. Yeah. So we've got our shorts and we just pull them up and he's just like, huh? <laughs> just nods his head. <laughs> and we're both just like, what the fuck? Like, this is hilarious. Oh, you yeah. know? And then we're like both second guessing ourselves, you know, like, did we do the right thing? You know, we both probably took a shit that day and had to like look down for the first time at this healing cassette yeah. on our thighs that we're going to see forever. <laughs> like it was for the lulls. And it didn't, it didn't but result it, in lulls. It, it, it's a classic piece of metal culture though. Yes. Return yeah. my fucking stamps. That's your next one. Yeah. Send, <laughs> send back stamps. Yeah. No yeah. posers, you know, anything like that. Yeah. No, that, that's awesome. I have, I've always been tempted to get the, uh, the campaign for musical destruction, grind core, like, uh, oh, the yeah. musical note thing with the, whatever you call that. Anti symbol. The anti symbol. Yeah. I've always wanted to get that somewhere, but I haven't. Maybe, maybe I will one day. But yeah, you know, demo is better. I say this like I have a lot of tattoos. I don't, but I mean, I'm convinced that like fun tattoos are the like they're the most. I've never regretted this honestly. I think it was like the best right tattoo. I don't know. I think because like we were also going to get like spring break 99 tattoos. Keep in mind, this is like 2018 because Austin has like something that started like as a tattoo that was supposed to be spring break of like a year far gone. Okay. And so I was going to get like a raccoon, you know, passed yeah. out by a trash can and just yeah. like, you know, spring break 99 and we just going to get something else, but we just settled on the demo. I, I think you made the right choice. I, I like that one. Yeah. I like it too. Cause you have a, <clears throat> excuse me you have a shared experience with somebody it's like a good memory yeah. it's a good story you know that's why i like mine yeah. so much it's like oh you bought it for me i was doing these things like we went to subway beforehand you know like really cool stuff like that did we go to subway uh it, actually i think it was a um jimmy john's oh okay yeah i was gonna say fuck speaking of stamps i so i i was actually worried about the podcast because i'm like i am I'm not good. I, my brain is broken a lot, but I, I, I went on YouTube by pure accident because Ben brain smasher invited mm-hmm. 
to like what I assumed was a Zoom call. And okay. then when it was YouTube, I was like, that's no big deal. He has a channel. That makes sense. I guess it's hosted on YouTube. Yeah. No, it's a fucking live stream. So I'm there for like with Marty, um, this like death metal guy. Oh, okay. And anyway, they made the subway joke and they're just talking about like Marty's like uh, Buzz Binder and Marty's like subway used to be so good when they started. And then like this other death metal guy is like, always like, yeah, but oh man, you know, <laughs> whatever their opinions are. And I just like chimed in while on my second pint of ice cream, eating it with my tongue, yeah. you know? And I'm like, yeah, but have you guys ever tried mailing letters with their stamps? <laughs> That was oh. one of my favorite jokes. That and I think someone was like saying something about like I was just trying to troll the one guy so hard, but he was like saying something about into the oven is like a song title. I was like, What's well, a song about a pie? Yeah. <laughs> More pizza thrash. Just total <laughs> total idiot. It was fun. Yeah, I saw that Marty's doing something. Is it what it, was it that yeah. metallurgy thing he's doing? Yeah, actually, that's totally different. And he just did a Merciful Fate one, which was killer. Okay. Um, with Melanie Loves Death Metal and uh, Alan. I forget Alan's channel, but those three all. Okay. Did a Merciful Fate thing. It was cool. Cool. That's really cool. I went and saw Merciful Fate two years ago. Yeah, right before the pandemic with Nick Woos. Um, yeah. I, I'd never seen them before. I've never really been a King Diamond or Merciful Fate fan, but it was really cool to see. And it was just like, it was like Portland metal luminaries in there. It was just like everywhere I looked, I'm like, oh, that's so-and-so and and that's so-and-so and and that's this guy and that's that person. And yeah, but yeah, it was cool to see the production, you know, um, just like, I mean, he had like three stories of sets behind him that he was running around and yeah, it's crazy stuff. Yeah. Yeah. He's, uh, he's so good. Yeah. Was that Merciful Fader or is it King Diamond? It was... It was Merciful Fate. I'm okay. quite sure. <laughs> I could be you know, wrong, but I'm... Well, there's a lineup difference, right? I mean... Yeah, yeah. Andy LaRock, he's in... Is he in uh, both? Actually, that's a good question. I know Andy LaRock's in King Diamond. and Okay. I get... Honestly, I get dinner confused, too. I, I, sh- I should know the stuff. Here I am, but... Um, God, I want to say it was Merciful Fate, but it might have been King Diamond. That's how bad I am. I don't know which one I saw. Well, <clears throat> I thought it was really interesting in the metallurgy thing because, like, uh, um, Marty was going to argue that King Diamond's Fatal Portrait was the second best Merciful Fate album, which I thought was amazing. And uh-huh. I never realized that, like, Don't Break the Oath, that the devil was actually, like, pointing to the woman on Fatal Portrait. Like, she's in oh. the flames. Okay. I don't know. It's just... Is really, really cool. Super. I don't know. I still don't remember like the Melissa story and shit like that. You know, like yeah. I, I suck with lyrics. I mean, besides knowing that Dark Tranquilities were beautiful, right? <laughs> when they were young, <laughs> yeah. You know, but like I, yeah, yeah. God, I even mentioned Sabat earlier. Like all these like storytellers. I'm just like, I don't care. I just like it when you move, move, move. <laughs> yeah. Like, say it. <laughs> yeah. I used to really not care about lyrics at all. But now I'm I'm finding more enjoyment in them if they're really good. Problem is, there's like so many bad ones. So you don't like bad lyrics? Only if it's unintentionally awesome. Yeah. Like Samael, like bulge tummy <laughs> woman, oh deformed body woman, you know shit like that. Um, yeah. Tiamat is on the edge sometimes. Um, overflowing to fly. What eagles fly? Yeah. Yeah. Overflowing toothpaste tubes, an old man rises from his wheelchair. Like, what the fuck are you guys talking about? Brilliant. But man, I mean, Wild Honey and you know, I, even Deeper Kind of Slumber. I love that record. That yeah, recently got reissued on vinyl. I, I picked it up right away. And but fuck, I mean, Clouds too. Even the fucking goofy ass lyrics, like the smell yeah, of incense the takes me high. So me high. fucking good. Way up high, where eagles where fly. Eagles yeah. fly. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, it's so good. Um. I like, worship the so, devil. Yes. <laughs> yes. There's there's a conversation between Cemetery's Godless Beauty and Tiamat's Clouds. Oh, for sure. yeah. Good call. Yeah. Except I'm, I think a little better lyrics, but oh my gosh, I'm trying to think of the Godless Beauty song where like, that's been forever. talking about like the devil. I don't know. This has some hold on this woman and yeah, ah, I'm going to fuck it up, but it's hilarious. Yeah. Like, the lyrics are just 
supposed to be something and they're they they're, fall yeah right they fall they fall <laughs> short <laughs> wonderfully yeah. yeah uh that first tiamat record too astral sleep man that's that blew my mind when that came out because i was just buying everything i could and i'm like oh oh yeah you know i don't know what this is and i remember the first time hearing it being like it's mellow death metal yeah which it kind of is but i just didn't know what to do with it like mountain of doom I mean, that Did was you just... know what to do with Afflicted? Oh, hell no. <laughs> My God, Prodigal Son? No, no idea. Like, that was really weird shit, too. That's a record yeah, I've returned I mean... to a few times lately. Oh, it's so good. It's, I think it's hard to latch on to, but song by song, it's mind-blowing. Yeah. It, like, But yeah, like, it is weird to see those kinds of, like, rock elements without being, like, the kind of horrible rock. It mm -hmm. was almost like death metal's response to grunge. Yeah, something. yeah. When they kind of dressed like it too, at times it's like yeah, yeah. Finland always did. Oh yeah, Finland, Finland always dressed like the best. <laughs> Finland is such a strange musical output. I recently got that uh, "Rotting Ways to Mystery," <laughs> "Rotting Ways to Misery" book. I haven't, I haven't dived in yet, but I'm looking forward to it. I've always loved the Finnish scene. Yeah, I haven't. Um, I've seen people post that, but God, I should really get that too. Yeah, it's available through Decibel. I got the obituary book too, turned inside out, because I'm an obituary freak. Oh yeah. And I'm I, I'm looking forward to that. I'm I don't know. I'd be I guess I'd be curious. I just don't know what there would be to say about obituary. Like what do they Um uh, I think probably in a nutshell it's gonna be I drank a Budweiser, I mowed a lawn, I made some metal, I went to bed. That's yeah, it. Yeah, I mean I guess yeah, yeah, I guess that's this. If you if you're gonna have a third child, definitely pick that one up because you can take it <laughs> chapter by chapter. I'm not gonna have a third child. <laughs> <laughs> you got the book. I don't know. I'm just well I'm just saying. I mean, maybe you're right. Maybe this is the perfect time to have another kid so I can read them. The take it slow and be like, Dad, what's what are the tardies gonna do next? <laughs> the tardy boys. Read more tardy boys. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, the Tardy Boys and the Hoffman Brothers. Yeah, it, there should so be many a, mysteries to be solved. There should be a series about the Tardy Boys and the Hoffman Brothers and the like, warring death metal tribes. That'd be great. You know, MD, some universe that already exists. Oh yeah, for sure. Kind of like uh, what is it, Henry and Glenn, Glenn and Henry, whatever that is, the Glenn Danzig, uh, Henry Rollins comic thing. Have you seen this? No, no, I'm, I'm still listening. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it's an online phenomenon. Somebody decided to make some kind of comic series about Glenn Danzig and Henry Rollins being partners. Ah, yeah. well, I mean, yeah, I yeah. guess we'll see where that goes. Yeah, I don't think there's a lot of a lot of fan fiction like that on the internet, as it turns out. Yeah, a lot of yeah. people need material. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Um, do you think there'll be one of us <laughs> after this episode? For sure. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Please yeah. write in, uh, to at obsequia on Instagram. <laughs> um, I don't know why people think they can't contact me. You can contact me. It's easy. Slide my DMs. Yeah. Just it's called Instagram. Send me that, send me that fan art. Yeah. Learn about it. It's going to be a, a book called Tanner and Jason are cute together. Yeah. 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 I think it's a really good idea. Um, Speaking of decibel mm. illustrations, cartoons, yes. comics, whatever it is, did you see the Agalock one? I'm sure you did at some point in time. I'm positive I did. Yeah. Um, they made me look like was... they made me look like Frankenstein. Like I look like Frankenstein. Yes, I yeah. totally remember this now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they make they make Don look like he's really really old. Yeah, and I, frail. I, I mean, he I kind of is, but. Even the 2019 one, I was struggling to remember because it was like one after the other. Yeah. I mean, I was a subscriber. I'm a subscriber. So, I mean, like I was, you know, but I already forgot. I just, yeah, there's so many. They're all so, so many. good. Yeah. It's so funny. I just subscribed for the first time ever. I just thought I've been talking to Albert now and then. And I was like, hell, I'm going to subscribe. Why not? So, yeah. Got my first issue uh, last month. Just got the newest issue, I think. Really great feature on Dead Horse, who I 
fucking love. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, what's his name from Radical Research was on that and Phil Anselmo. <laughs> oh, so you probably don't know this story. Actually, there's no reason that you would you would know this story. So Hunter from Radical Research, he's the new drummer for Sculptured. Yes. And he and I have become pretty good friends over the last few years. And for no apparent reason, in my very Jason way, I just kept over the last few months telling Hunter, like, oh, are you going to like talk to Phil Anselmo today? Like, I'm just giving him shit that has nothing to do with anything. And then that issue came out, and I got it, and there's Hunter right next to Phil Anselmo. And I so I took a photo, texted it to Hunter, and I'm like, I had no idea this was going to happen, but here you are right next to Phil Anselmo. And he's like, yeah, I Wait, have no why, idea either. Why would he have known Phil Anselmo? No reason. That's what I'm saying. I'm just, I was just making up shit. Oh, that's amazing. That's even better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was just, I was just like, Hey, are you going to go see Phil today? You know, and just bullshit like that. And then there they were in a magazine next to each other. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It was a weird sandwich too. Cause Hunter was in the middle of Phil Anselmo and then Phil from Sacred Reich. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you wield a lot of power, don't you? <laughs> Maybe I do. Yeah. I, you know, I hope you text me every day. Like, are you going to win the lottery today, Tanner? Yeah. Piece of shit. I'm, I'm going to. I'll be like, yeah. And then you're like, oh, I, I did win the lottery. I'll, yeah. I'll buy the tickets with uh, the fan fiction erotica coloring book that someone's going to make and send to me. Right. Uh, you can also subscribe to my only tans. It's for... <laughs> Tanner's named me. <laughs> <laughs> only Tans. I love it. Only yeah. Tanner Andersons. Yeah. yeah. That's only, a, oh, yeah only, only Tanner. Tanners. <laughs> Tandersons. Yeah. Uh, there was once a really beautiful time in Minneapolis where we had three Andersons in the same room. It yes. You, Billy, and Don. Yeah. That was We had great. no idea what to do with one another. We hadn't seen each other since... Uh, like the Highlander thing when we were all right in Scotland with our, our first uh, clan of yeah. Andersons. Yeah. Clanderson. Clanderson's. <laughs> yeah. That was fun. Uh, I got really confused though. I kept like telling you to get on stage with me and then Don would be like, no dude, like I'm Don. I'm like, Oh yeah. Like you guys look so similar. And I'm so sorry. I fucked up that opening song. You really did. You, you have no idea how to play dead winter days. It's really, no, it's really just, it's really gross. Yeah, that's why I'm going to be the keyboard player. You won't even know I'm there. I'll just, You'll just I'll lay, lay down. You just lay down on the <laughs> stage. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that'll be great. Uh, <laughs> that, was, that was a real meeting of the Andersons. Clanderson Anderson. Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we got to give that to Martin Walker. You need to have him on. Talk about a, oh my God. a, a pun master. Seriously. The clandestined? Are you kidding oh, me? Oh, yeah. What a record clandestine is. Jesus Christ. Oh yeah, we do. We do disagree, but I'm still waiting. You know, I've been, I've really had my tastes change. Like, uh, like I told you, I didn't really like emperor until a few yeah. years ago. Yeah. And even then I still am like, Oh, well, whatever, yeah. <laughs> you know, but like I'm waiting to like clandestine. Cause it's not like I don't see a great record in there. It's just the production always bugged me. And I love crawl. I know. You know? I know. That's it. That's it. The Crawley P is. Hmm. What's that guy's name? That uh, Nirvana, two thousand two uh, guy. Uh, uh, I want to say like Johnny Dordevic or something. Yeah, it it is a weird it is a w weird last name. Um, Johnny. Something like that. Yeah, God, that guy is so good. Yep, he's so good. Yep. But yeah, I'm, I'm I'll wait until like that, and I, I one day I'm gonna just text you. Yeah. If you keep texting me, you'd be like, hey. Do you like clandestine yet? Did you listen to it with Phil Anselmo? And then <laughs> yeah. Let's do the next issue of Decibel. <laughs> You'll be right there. <laughs> Doing a review. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Uh, and Nirvana 2002. That that shit's great, too. The, some of the best four songs I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> seriously. To, uh, <laughs> Cardinal Sin, or what a weird one to pull out. I was thinking of um, uh, what are some other bands that only have four songs? Um, that's a tough one. That's a really tough one. There's a, there's a definitely, um, a pop, a, a band. Um, there's the guy that David Vincent wanted to be that Texas death metal band. 
where they were the roadies. And remember when he was busted on the bus with like the human skull, it was actually yep. the other guys. It was very popular to like this band for a while. They only have four songs and that's why I can't seem to remember. I can't remember either. Anyway, moving on. Yeah. What are some other four song bands? Uh, Cathedral's demo and then they never did anything else, right? <laughs> yeah. I think they broke up after that demo. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Uh, wow. That's a really tough one. I, I can't think of any. Off oh, li- Liars in Wait. Spiritual oh, yeah. Liars of course. Uh-huh. Um, yep. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, this is a stupid game. No, we have to do this for another three hours for sure. Okay. You got it. Four hours. Bathroom break. <laughs> Also, it was it was totally Necrovore. That was the band that I forgot. It took Necrovore. taking a bathroom break while I was yeah yeah Necrovore. God, I kind of remember that band, but I always think of Rotrovore. Oh yeah, yeah, Rotrovore. Also, also great. I loved well, yeah, I loved Rotrovore, but they they had a I had a seven inch of theirs that I thought was their only output like forever, and then I realized they had at least one full length after that. Maybe even yeah. more. Is that seven inch the green logo yeah, one? Yeah. Yeah. Uh I I can almost remember what it's called. Something about the virtuous and the vicious or something. Oh, this happens to me more and more, and this is what I worry about. <laughs> Not being able to remember seven inches from nineteen ninety two. Come on. Um you know what I I was thinking about this morning in the shower. It's really bizarre that Repulsion hasn't recorded more than they have. No kidding. Yeah. They had the one seven inch, which I also had with the Rotoware seven inch. And then they had their full length. And I think that's it, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe like some rehearsals or demos, but like only yeah, one full length album. Post. I don't, yeah, I don't know why. I don't know. I mean, they I no just idea. played the, the metal and beer fest in LA. I think it was. Just yeah, like a they, couple weeks they, ago. They played the Philly Decibel Fest 2 in 2016, I think. Mm-hmm. Or maybe it was the next year. Okay. I don't remember. But yeah, they should they should have some stuff. You would think so. Who knows? The pandemic really fucked up a lot of stuff, too. Yeah. You know? It sure did. Yeah. It really did. Oh, my God. Um, what are you working on musically these days? Well, um, speaking of the pandemic fucking things up, I mean... I have not been working on obsequii as actively because um, because of a lot of few reasons, but I'm, I'm yeah. moving and I need to do some stuff before I move. So, um, but I'm going to resume in July or August um, after the show is because I've been thinking about things. But musically, yeah, I, I a reason I kind of put it on hold is because I know you can't really put music on hold. There's always things that right. I've I always say yes to things, trying not to. Um, you know, as much, uh, but like I, my band burning here, uh, we have an album we recorded in 2018 and since then have done two more albums, but that 2018 one has not been released. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) So I just did some stuff on, on a new burning album that's going to come out on virtues, which is uh, Alex from climax denials label. Okay. And, um, I'm doing vocals, a completely opposite spectrum for Ed Wanton, which is, Oh, that's uh, right. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. It's the band that Vex from Texas became. Yeah. Um, I'm excited about that. I really like these new songs a lot and it's fun to be a vocalist. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. That's what I always wanted to do. Like growing up, like I, if I could just like drop the bass and just be a vocalist. Yeah. It'd, it'd make me happy. Yeah. Yeah, that's so fun. Yeah, I, I'd totally forgotten that you were doing that. That's yeah. But that's really it. I mean, I I wish I could have you know be working on more, but I'm going to go hard once I once I you know get this stuff. Long story short, for anyone who cares, I'm, I'm in school, just wrapping up <clears throat> the undergrad that I should have finished when I was 21. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's kind of and you're you're moving soon. So that's yes, a big, be, big life change very soon. Yeah. So selling a house and we're doing rehearsals. Like the, where's the, what could go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. What could go wrong? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you have a, you have like a partially finished track that you want to share with us? Yeah. Um, so 
this is a song um, I have. I think if Owen knew I was sharing this, he'd be like, let me do drums again. Because we pieced it together, you know, like just mm-hmm. part by part. Yeah. Um, and to be fair, I did contribute this track to the Overgrow to Overthrow compilation. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm positive that's not, you know, not a lot of people have heard that or found it. But um, yeah, the song is going to be on a future release. Uh, I doubt it'll be an album, but maybe like an EP or something like that. Okay. I, I like it a lot. Uh, it was fun. I, kind of moving into the more adventure stuff that we were talking about earlier. Yeah, that I was. So yeah, it's a track called Against All Feudal Lords. Nice. And uh, yeah, it's it's fun. So it's going to sound like shit. And the only reason I wanted to share this is not just because it's, you know, I guess it's going to be exclusive for Jason and stuff, but um is also because I'm pretty sure you know how to find Osekui on any other platform. So that's true. let's keep yeah. it interesting. It'll, it'll sound dirty and that's how it should sound. Awesome. All right. Let's listen to it. All right.
Cool. Tanner, thanks so much for sharing that with us. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, it is about time to wrap up this episode. I could sit Aww. here and talk with you for hours, but, um, you know, nobody else wants us to do that until no, there's more no, fanfic no. about us. Yeah. Jason exactly. and Tanner are cute together. Uh, <laughs> but I, I do have a question for you. Yeah. Why do you hate music? I hate music because, um, because it's thrown a lot of shit into my life. Like it's given me a lot of purpose to, um, to try and challenge myself, but it's sort of like test driving my confidence for life. You know, you like okay. music mm-hmm. is a safe place to do that. Um, and then, you know, once I realize how easy it is when you have just a little bit of belief in yourself, then I'm like, why have I wasted so much time on music? Yeah. I just need to, I just need to do more stuff. So it's a lesson in learning. Um, do you feel uh, like you're too focused? Oh, go ahead. Oh, I have no idea how to answer this question. Believe it or not. When you're like, it's a surprise question. I'm like, of course that's it. I yeah. don't know. Um, I try and I try not to actually be as critical and you know, as fun as it is. Um, you know, these days I really do try and keep an open mind with stuff, but yeah, like, sure. I'll talk shit about music. It's, it's totally gotten in the way of a lot of things. And I think we've both related that the amount of effort we put into things, especially the things that don't even come out yeah. you know, and the consequences it has on people you love. And, um, and also like weird omens that seem to follow them. Yeah. You uh-huh. know, like, yeah, that shit's very real. And yeah. So that's what I, I'm, I'm just going to say that. That's how, that's why I hate music. I remember, I can't remember the last time I, I talked to you about this, but there was a span of time, a quite a long span of time that every time I released a record, someone around me would die. Yep. That stopped happening. I think. Or maybe I'm just not drawing the parallels like I was before, but so much so that when I did my solo seven inch and you did vocals on the second side, that's right. Yeah. I dedicated it to my stepfather and to Catherine Ludwig, uh, two people I was very close with because they both passed away in the time that I was writing those two songs. After that, I feel like the trend stopped or again, maybe I'm not drawing the parallels. But like when, uh, when I elbowed my way onto that celestial record, my grandma passed away (laughs) when I did that, Yeah, you know, that's right. Um, so yeah, I mean the omen thing, it it can be real for sure. Uh, that was quite unnerving for quite some time. And I actually got to a point where like, I felt really nervous to release things for a while. Um, but yeah, I mean, I echo everything that you say, of course it's, it's, it brings me a lot of happiness and a lot of joy, but it also tends to bring on stress and put stress on relationships and stress on finances and stress on everything. <laughs> yeah. It's uh it's tough to be sort of fanatical about something and, um, and enthusiastic about it and still know that you need to kind of like see how narrow you're looking at something and kind of broaden and come out and look at at bigger stuff. Because if you let it, music can do wonderful things. But if you have shit like us or (laughs) an affective disorder like me, it (laughs) makes it a little trickier. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, it's done many, many amazing things for me as well, obviously. But, uh, I always like to not to be like negative about it, but I like to explore the other side of it too. And, uh, I think that sometimes it's really healthy, kind of like what you were saying, how you're trying to like not say yes all the time. I have been consciously doing that over the last six months and it's hard, but I'm finding it's also rewarding and it's freeing up my time for other things like self care and making sure that I'm happy. (laughs) other than mixing another damn record for somebody or, you know, doing something that I don't want to do necessarily. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I really, I picked up the stop saying yes to things, uh, from the 
that woman I'm going to marry. Yeah, that's (laughs) important. That's, that was a, and that's exactly what you said too. I mean, you really have to kind of examine what's making you happy. And sometimes our passions can sort of blind us to think that we're happy with them, but yeah. Yeah. Just step back. You know, it's always there. You can always come back. Yeah. It's a balance, you know, and that's, I've been out of balance for a little bit. So now I'm trying to just correct, get more balanced again, have some downtime, have some time where I can read a book or just not do anything, which is rare for me. So I'm trying to get to that spot. Yeah. Um, you've got so much to, I mean, I can't believe how old your girls are too now. I know. I mean, like, yeah, yeah no, it, It'll all, it'll all come together. It always does. And you're doing, holy shit, you're doing a lot. You're doing a podcast immediately after work on a Friday. Yeah, that's true. When Elden Ring came out, I don't even play, but that's all anyone's talking about. No, I heard about that. Yeah. I prefer the demo. Yeah. The demo was so much better. So much better. Fucking Elden Ring demo. I liked the fucking Doom demo better. The Mario Brothers demo. I mean, the Mario Brothers uh, demo was sick. That was... That was wicked. Another four song yeah. band. The one that, that came with Duck Hunt? Yes. That, yeah. 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 No, they weren't even it wasn't even called that. It was uh <laughs> it was actually just rabbits in a field. It was rabbit's carrot. <laughs> yeah, rabbit's carrot that um with John from Dissection. Exactly, was, yes. Mm-hmm. Was your guide. <laughs> um, and uh and you did you weren't allowed to have guns um right. in the game yeah. uh, anymore. Unless a guy named Vlad was there. And he threw it at you. Oh, Vlad. Oh, yeah. this got real. Wow. Yeah, man. It's, uh, yeah. Wow. So, okay. Yeah, the, demo, the, <laughs> the dissection uh, duck hunt demo was far better yeah. than, than life. <laughs> Rabbit's Carrot. That's another suspect band name. Yeah. What, what is that even? I, I don't know. Or Treblinka. That's another very suspect crawling and vomits <laughs> is that what that song's called i think so yeah uh one unfortunate name you remember when all those bands uh, so long ago but everyone was doing reunions so grotesque yep you know mm-hmm. got back together and uh, i think trip like it got i Oof. hate saying that out yeah loud. i know but they did and like uh johnny refused to do it which good on him you know yeah like uh-huh um but i, I just remember at the time that happened i was like just about to crest 30 and it was like no one under 30 is allowed. And I was like, respect. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, that's the right move. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's awesome. Um, I want to leave you with one, mm. one thing. Mm-hmm. I want to know if you know about the Bardo methodology zine. I am aware of it because of, kind of one of those like Google searches of search mm-hmm. band plus interview. Okay. And I've been on it, but I'm not familiar with it as far as like who runs it or what mm-hmm. it is. It seems very esoteric though. It is. It's, I became obsessed. I bought one <clears throat> issue from the Ajna offensive mm. and read the issue and loved it. And then I bought all the rest of the issues from Ajna. It's incredible. Absolutely incredible. The most like in depth, just fascinating interviews with a wide range of bands and they talk about the craziest stuff. I mean, it's not like how'd your band get started? You know, it's talking about the Sphinx with Mike Browning and uh, it's just, it's absolutely fascinating and they're gorgeous. They're expensive. They're like 10, 12 bucks an an issue, I think. Um, But man, they're so amazing. And I've just been so into them lately. It reminds me of, you know, the glory days, like is 10 stuff like that. Like really high oh, quality. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I definitely recommend it. I haven't looked at the, the interviews on the website. Um, but I'm sure that it's the same high quality stuff, but if you ever feel like holding a zine in your hand, order one of those, it's amazing. Yeah. No, I still, I still do buy zines. I just, I haven't bought that. So yeah, yeah I, I would, thank you for, I would do it. It's amazing. Hell yeah, man. All right. Well, thank you for that. Yeah. Tanner, thanks so much for spending the time with me. I really appreciate it. It was really good to talk to you. And, uh, it was 
wonderful talking to you. Thank you so much for having me on, Jason. Yeah, you've been at the top of my list to do this for a very long time, and I just haven't made it happen. So glad I finally finally did that. Uh, thanks for hanging, laughing, talking shit, talking about yeah. cold colors and all that. Just like, uh, <laughs> just like you're right in front of me. It's amazing. Yeah. All right, man. Uh, take care, and uh, I hope to talk to you soon. Yeah, likewise. Take care, Jason. All right. See ya. See ya. An Earth in Sound Production.